I've heard about like Clark and how y'all have the seafood boils Boils. and the smoothie place, the wing place. (laughs) Give us clarity. (laughs) Like like they'll put a flyer up like 15 minutes before. You got to be there. I'm Mm. fast walking. (laughs) (laughs) Juggling classes, making friends, studying tips, saving money. We're talking about all things college and giving you advice with real college students. Featuring today's hosts, Max McGadney, Mackenzie Loomis Harmon, and Alexis Berry. Welcome to the Campus Underground Podcast. Sit back, relax, and learn new hacks. Hello, everyone. My name is Max McGadney here with Campus Underground. And today, we're going to be talking about a various amount of topics. Right now, focusing mainly on navigating social life. And I'm here with a variety of different HBCU students. I'm going to pass it off to my girl, Alexis, right here, a fellow Howard student, Howard alum. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Alexis. I'm a Howard alum. Hi, everyone. My name is Mackenzie. I'm a junior art major attending Spelman College. Hi, everybody. I'm Layla, and I go to Clark Atlanta. Hey, y'all. My name is Akeem. I am a graduating senior at Morehouse College. Hello, everyone. My name is Jillian Collier. I'm a first-year political science major at Spelman College. All right, so just to break the ice a little bit, we're going to play a little game of Would You Rather. So first question, would you rather live by yourself or with a lot of roommates or just roommates in general? I'm living single, living by myself, for sure. I'm living by myself. I'm living by myself as well. <laughs> Y'all weird. No. <laughs> yeah, by myself all the way. I can't do roommates anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same here. Can't. What? How like, about you? I'm I'm living with roommates right now. And so all of y'all are living by yourself right now? Well, I, I have a I have a room. <laughs> I live in a suite. So I have my own room, but I still live in room of a room. Okay. So I have yeah. like three other roommates. So yeah. Yeah, I have a roommate, but we don't really talk. So like what's the point of having a roommate yeah okay <laughs> yeah i got three roommates but they're dirty though Ooh. like Ooh. makes me want to cry every day a little bit I'm right for you thank you no thank that you. is a situation with roommates is like you gotta find the balance between friendliness and mm-hmm. like if you're living like what you were taught when you were growing up like do you know how to clean yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. exactly Heavy on, do you know, do you know, how, know to how to cook yeah. yeah you know what i mean like there's That's a lot real. of things i'm i'm living with my best friends right now so I'm very fortunate in that department. Shout out to my friends if y'all watching this. <laughs> um, next question. Would you rather be a part of a halftime show or have front row seats to every single game? Front row seats all the way. Ooh, I'm going front row way. seats. I think me, I'd rather be a part of the show just because like, I like that exciting life. Like, mm. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. I would have to say courtside. I can't like a halftime show. I don't know. At certain mm-hmm. points, I don't like when all the attention's like, yeah, that's on really stressful. me. Yeah. Like, no, I'd have a panic attack. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to sit courtside all the time. I don't know, being a part of the halftime just sounds like a lot of pressure when I can just sit down and watch the game and leave when I want and, to. And, mm-hmm. I'm just there. Fine. Yeah, like, I'm just there. So, yeah. I feel like definitely as a halftime performer, like, it just, it's such an amazing experience. But I would also say, like, sitting courtside would be fun, too. Yeah, yeah that VIP treatment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but then the camera would be in your face, though, too. So it's like, mm, But at least you get your pictures on your content. That's true. Right? Mm-hmm. Heavy on the content. Yes. Right. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Look up. Or you can have a halftime performance picture. That's, That's good content too. Right. Like yeah. dance. Mm-hmm. That is, that might be better content Pretty debatably. Halftime. It might be. That's true. Yeah. All right. So my next question is, I don't know if you guys have this, but day party or night party? Darty. Ooh. Darty. I'm darty personally. I'm darty. <laughs> How Y'all, the darties, mm. but I be sleep by five. <laughs> yes, by five. I sleep actually have never done a darty. What? what? Same here. Girl, you yeah, gonna... I haven't checked that off my list yet. You gotta do that. No. Darties are one. fun. <laughs> it's a good engagement, like in the peak, in the climax of the day. But then, like at night, it's like nothing. Could you? party so much during the day it's like uh, you, but darties are sleep. fun yeah i'm dirty all day i like darties just because you can like actually see people's faces yes, yes. i think the fun part about the night party is that i don't see people's faces <laughs> okay 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 you don't see me i don't see you <laughs> points were made Perfect. whatever happens happens yeah. Yeah. i feel like points with the made. day party you don't have to wait in line and also it's warmer weather so it's just yeah, like a sunshine. nice summer yeah. vibe yeah. Better fits. Yeah. Better fits yeah. for sure. Right? <laughs> easier, yeah. easier for me to dress yes. too yeah. as well. So this is more of a question for y'all because we're we're not in this Atlanta area. But would you rather hang out at HBCUs or like different Atlanta schools? Well, HBCUs. HBCUs. I went to a party at and it was dead. <laughs> I was like, what? This is how you guys party? Like, what is going on? 
It was not fun. So I would definitely say like HBCUs in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I probably want to hang out with, like other schools. Um, I know we had a conversation earlier. Like I wanted to go to Howard, like see the culture there because I know the culture is like HBC was like one broad like name, but like mm -hmm. the cultures are different at, at each respective yeah. campus. That's so I true. definitely want to experience like what Howard gets into for sure. I feel like coming for homecoming, Clark's homecoming as well. It was just interesting to see the dynamic of the promenade mm -hmm. and like the vendors mm -hmm. and like the different like tailgate style that you guys had compared to Howard. So if you have the opportunity, definitely go experience Howard's because it was fun. Are you saying here. it's better? Did I hear that? Yeah, she didn't, no, she didn't say it. I didn't say all of that. Cool. They're probably, you know, they both have their pros and cons, I'd imagine. That's real. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, this is a, this is another question for y'all. Okay. Because okay. you guys have, what's cool about your guys' school is you guys have, like, all these schools in a very tight-knit community. Mm -hmm. So the question is, would you rather eat in the comfort of your campus or, like, hop other dining halls or, like, just experience the other HBCU just culture in terms of their food? I would just say, like, Spelman has the best food. Like, we just have, like, so many food options, so many choices. Mm -hmm. I think, like, last week I was sharing about how we had a Mardi Gras, like, dinner, and it was, like, fried chicken and, like, pork chops and catfish. Mm -hmm. um, so I just would rather stay on Spelman's campus okay. and eat my school's food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Honestly, I've heard about, like, Clark and how y'all have the seafood boils, boils. and the no, smoothie no, place, the wing <laughs> place. Oh, give us clarity. <laughs> like, like they'll put a flyer up like 15 minutes before you got to be there. I'm mm. fast walking. Hot commodity. Wait, so it's like they just they get, drop it on you. Mm -hmm. like, and they'll be like crab legs. You can get the shrimp. Demand. So you don't know before. You don't know before. They literally do it that day of. Morehouse is the same. Like I remember one time, y'all, they cooked salmon, y'all, and they had about 50 tickets, like wristbands or like whatever. And like that was it. I guess I was like fifty one. I didn't even get it. But the salmon looks so good. And it's like if you know, you know, Morehouse with salmon, that's like a hot commodity. And I'm like, dang. But I would rather eat at my own campus because I feel like I can complain about it so much because I know like the ins and outs. Mm -hmm. I don't know the ins and outs of Clark's or like Spelman, so I can't really like adhere to that. But I'll probably eat at my own campus for sure. Word. All right. Would you rather attend an off campus like HBCU tailgate or a campus wide like cookout? Campus wide cookout for sure. I'm going um, campus wide cookout personally. Spellhouse is like tailgate is just very like unique because it's like two it's two homecomings in one. So we share a homecoming. And then like instead of it being a tailgate that tailors like the football stadium, it like tailors like the entire like campus. So like mm -hmm. literally like the entire campus is like saturated with like bodies of people. It's very mm -hmm. interesting. Like each part of the campus is like food, 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 food. It's just really cool. So like I feel mm -hmm. like we get that experience a little bit. And it's almost mm -hmm. like there's a football game at our tailgate rather than like we're coming for the football game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just Every playing over game. there yeah. and we're enjoying our homecoming. Literally. Literally. I'd rather do the campus wide cookout instead of like going to another school's tailgate just because like I'm familiar with my campus and my people. So I'll be able to like navigate it better mm. versus me going to visit someone else's campus. This is like, I don't know where I'm supposed to go, where the hot spots at. Like. <laughs> That's real. Yeah. And just speaking on like what Mackenzie said, I feel like just being around your peers and like the love that HBC HBCUs have mm -hmm. like it's like hey girl I haven't seen you in so long or like hey how's class like you're able to just you know be there and be surrounded by that love yes, yes. and connecting on that commonality it's like yeah mm -hmm. you took psych yeah I had psych oh yeah you in the sorority yeah I'm in the sorority like mm -hmm. it it's like that bond of like that implicit love like you've spoken before mm -hmm. like it's just there you don't have to like say it but it's there you feel it so mm -hmm. yeah for sure yeah, and I definitely think that that's something that like people need and that's why they come to HBCUs. Mm -hmm. um, my first experience was this year with homecoming and it was just like so beautiful to see so many black people like oh lit, God. educated, yeah. beautiful, yeah. like sure. all together, you know, whereas I was the minority in my high school and in my small white town. And so mm -hmm. it's just, you know, beautiful to be in a space where everyone looks like me. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Love the culture. Got to. So my last question for the would you rather. It's a little, you know what I'm saying? So this is the hot question. Okay. Oh. Okay. So is Greek life or me personally? I'm personally. You know what I'm saying? I got nothing but respect for the D9, but that's just where I'm at right now. Kenzie. Me personally, I'm biased. I would say right. Greek life all As the way. As you should be. As you should be. <laughs> yeah. Greek life all the way. I'm going to say Greek life just because like, like I'm not a part of any like any Greeks, but it is like it is like empowering to see like that group of like 
I'm going to say a group of individuality, and I'm going to define that a little bit. It's like that group of individuals. Everybody's different, but that holistic value based off of one organization, right. but mm-hmm. still under the um, NPHC, it's cool to see. Like, mm-hmm. rather, whether you're in it or not, it's like, it's just really cool to see. It's beautiful, especially yeah, the like, history of it and where it's coming from. Literally, like, yeah. literally. The historical context, it just goes beyond, for sure. I would have to say Greek life. I'm not associated with anything, but like piggybacking off what you said. I like the culture. I like the commu- the sense of community because like to me, we don't have that. Like there's a lot of things that we were robbed of, so we don't have that. So I just love that, that we created it. And not to mention the parties. <laughs> like in the, in the parties. Sorry. The, yes. Well, yes. Literally. <laughs> this is kind of related, but not really. Like I know for at Howard, there's a crazy amount of like different organizations um i'm a part of a creative collective called 360 creativity saves lives but there's like there's poetry organizations like (laughs) skating there's a motorsport club Mm at howard like what are some of your guys's like organizations like Mm, that's a good question well the clubs are like endless like for everything like there's everything like if there's not something that is on the campus that you want, you go and create it. Mm-hmm. So right. mm-hmm. like some things I'm in, like I'm in a mental health organization called Hope Spellman. Um, I'm in a sports organization and I actually just started a committee. Shout out to MSEC, yeah. Warehouse Sports okay. Organization. Yes. But yeah, like, um, and I think I just joined like clubs and organizations that can also give me a community, but things that I'm interested in and like going into afterwards, like yeah. after yeah. college. Yeah. I would have to say the same. Like, I'm a part of um, this model troupe on campus, but I've been in it since I came to Morehouse. So, like, being in an organization and, like, being there as, like, a general member and seeing that sense of community and being able to want to also foster a sense of community, like, by joining the... um, or going from being a general member to the executive board and witnessing that growth for me and then also witnessing the growth of the org. It's just something empowering just looking back, like seeing that sense of belonging there or something that you also contributed to, mm-hmm. whether like your worth ethic or not, because like we're all students at the end of the day. And like when we're a part of like student organizations and actually like being at the meetings, being at the events, those long meetings, especially like, mm-hmm. you, you know, if you're a part of a club, you know what that means. Yeah. But like, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I agree. I think that there's like three clubs that really stick out to me and organizations that I'm a part of. I know the Spelman College Glee Club is like very historical Mm -hmm. Um, and just our four pillars, our sisterhood, um, amazing and inspiring and excellence and just being with other women, you know, who sing and are interested in music, classically trained singers. Like it's just so empowering. Um, I would also say the AUC agency as well. That's how I met Keem. And, you know, just meeting all of these people that I just love and they can dress and they're just like so (laughs) cute and fun. Like it's just an amazing experience. Um, And then I would say like student government. That's something that I'm very much interested in and being a part of next year. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of the clubs here prepare you for, you know, Mm -hmm. post-college. I know for me being a political science major, politics is something that I absolutely love. And I think student government is something that I can exercise that in Mm -hmm. and, you know, further grow my abilities in that. Yeah. And also speaking on like post-grad, I can kind of talk about like that side of things. I feel like organizations and clubs have definitely shaped me to have a network and have people to lean on. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important when you're coming from a community of love and support and you're out in the real world and it's just adulting is a lot sometimes. So it's just like having those people to check in, say, hey, I need a job, or hey, if you're looking for someone and they consider you and you know show love to you regardless of where you are in life, I think that's important. So definitely keep in contact with them. Yes. Right. Yeah. I agree. I think it's cool to see how like with clubs, in high school, people didn't really want to do clubs and organizations. And then when you come to college, and especially at HBCUs, we're like, in the front office like we run everything mm-hmm. in the club mm-hmm. especially when you're on the e-board mm-hmm. and you're like this director you have this meeting at this different time of the day and especially like as college students like we're we're not only like in class but we do like three different clubs and then we're on the e-boards for two of them so it's like it's so cool to see like the different like how you go from high school to college and you take on more responsibility but you actually like chose to do it like you want to do it so i think yeah. that's cool yeah. like we're the boss and ceos right yeah. Yeah. We literally. Are. Like, literally. <laughs> but what's crazy yeah. though is like we're the boss and ceos but we're also full-time students at the yeah. same yeah. time yeah. so it's like i know for me it was hard to find a balance in terms of like school i'm making youtube videos consistently mm-hmm. i'm in a bunch of organizations where i'm in higher up positions where i'm like a leader in those situations but yeah. it's like how do you guys find ways to balance both the organization side, your school life, your social life? Like, 
do you guys schedule out your days? Are you like just me personally? I I just got into planning. Like mm. for the past three years, I've just been winging it every single day. Yeah. Wow, that would drop me oh, crazy. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Wow. yeah. <laughs> but, but I would I, say, um, sorry. Okay, yeah, good go. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay, um, <laughs> I would say boundaries. Like setting boundaries for yourself is like something that has been like a principle for me lately, as mm -hmm. of late. Just because like, and I didn't have it before. It's like, okay, if I have this is my day, my day is jam packed, but my mental health's not there. Mm -hmm. Or I feel like I'm lacking and I'm overcompensating in other areas where I'm lacking. I need to set a boundary for myself. Okay, I'm gonna do all of this. By 10 p.m. I'm in bed. No phones, no nothing, I'm just bed like that. 10 and obviously, mm -hmm. just for an example. <laughs> okay, okay. Like, I'm, I'm like, oh. like, my schedule has been so busy lately, so it's like boundaries have not been in conversation, but mm -hmm. setting boundaries for yourself, because it allows you to have it in different aspects of your life also, not just academic, social, mm -hmm. financial, et cetera. So like having those boundaries for sure has helped me in different areas. Cause like if I'm just not if I'm just not my best self and I can't contribute in other areas, I'm not gonna give you twenty five percent. It's mm -hmm. just like I can't give you that. Yeah. So if I can't give you a hundred percent, I'm just not gonna give you myself at all. I'm gonna right. give myself a boundary and then I'm gonna uh, move accordingly. I definitely have to learn like. how to say no. Yeah. Yes. 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 And I think adding to that, like all opportunities are not meaningful opportunities. Like people asking you, you know, to come speak at this, to be at this, to do that. Mm -hmm. I kind of have to take a step back and be like, okay, like, thank you for this, but I'm not going to be able to make it because not every opportunity is meaningful or, you know, going to benefit me with time. Like, I just don't have the time to do it all. What's like an example of y'all when you were given like bad advice? Wait, let me think. Let me think. I don't know. For me, it was like people, I remember being told like, you just gotta study, like lock in, like don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's true, you definitely have to study, but like at the same time, it's like, don't overdo it. Like you have to have a balance in that sense. Like, I think, I know like in high school, like my teachers were grinding me. They were like, oh yeah, college is gonna be way harder than this, da, da, da. And I don't necessarily think it's hard. I think high school was more hard because it was just like that consistency of that pressure. Mm -hmm to attain a diploma mm -hmm. and then go from there. But once you get in college and you're paying for your education, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, yeah, I'm here. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go to class, but I'm going to go. Like, right. I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it. Like, it's you're just, paying for that, yeah. I'm paying mm -hmm. for it. So already having that, like, you know, that responsibility and then just being here. And then, like, um, you, like you said prior, it's like having, like, doing your interests and stuff like that. Like, you're taking classes of, like, your interests. So, of course, mm -hmm. you're going to be more inclined to go to class. Like, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Rather than high school, it's just, like, you're just, just taking stuff that the state requires you to do. Yeah, just you going know what through I mean? the motions. You're not a math person, but, hey, you're taking six math classes yeah. before you graduate. So, like, just having that interest, it kind of helps a little bit. Yeah. I would say, like, uh, bad advice for me had been, like, listening to teachers and, like, educators who have never been to an HBCU. Because, like, you no. simply just cannot tell me anything. No. And, like, I like I kind of said, like, I was the minority at my high school. And so, mm -hmm. of course, like, a lot of the teachers' representation just was not a thing. So, like, teachers were like, oh, yeah, your school's going to be like this. Your school's going to be like that. This is what this is going to look like. Absolutely not. It's just, it's just not what Spelman is like, you mm -hmm. know, because they have never experienced being a student at an HBCU. So the advice that they gave me was kind of skewed because they just didn't have that perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in terms of bad advice, I don't I can't like think of anything specifically, but I would say like it's kind of hard to get advice from other people mm -hmm. for like your specific college experience mm -hmm. just because like you make your experience what it is. Mm -hmm. So um, you can like listen to other people and take their advice. But like ultimately, when you get to the school, it all depends on you and how your college experience turns mm -hmm. out. And I think like for me, like and it wasn't even from like a parental or like a teacher standpoint like I know some of my friends when I was in high school like and they were like applying and um, committing to their schools and they were committing to PWIs and then I was saying I was going to Morehouse and they were like oh well like I don't want, I don't want to go to HBCU because I'm not going to get those opportunities that I get that I'm going to get at my PWI and like that never really stood with me because I knew the historical context like I knew what college I was going to like I knew the historical context mm -hmm. to Morehouse and like the AUC etc so I knew like my placement here is going to have in maximize beneficial gain once mm -hmm. I get there. You know what I mean? Not even when I graduate. The mm -hmm. amount of opportunities that I that have been afforded to me at Morehouse are so endless and never probably would have happened if I would have went to like a school where I would have been just been a statistical number. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like having that aspect because they were saying, oh they're like you're not gonna get this. And it's like 
it's because I've done so much in my four years that I probably wouldn't have done in my one year anywhere yeah. else. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. So I think of it like that. And I'm grateful for where I, went, where yeah. I am now. And yeah. that's interesting to think about, like, how many other students have probably gotten that bad Same advice from other people. Mm-hmm. And they've listened. And they listened. Yeah. And they went to that PWI. Yeah. So, yeah. like, they could their experience could That is painful out. to think about. Yeah. That's, that's a lot. Like, that's literally the lane, though. It's like that conversational lane. That's, like, a, how a lot of people don't go because the lack of knowledge and the lack of implementation. Like, I think Morehouse does a good job with outreach and Spelman does a good job with outreach to, like, schools to get y'all to come here and have those conversations because this is what this looks like. You can come here, you can succeed, et cetera. But then, like, you have, like, those other parts of the country that doesn't have, like, where HBCUs aren't really local, localized. Mm-hmm. And, like, so they don't see that often. <clears throat> and having that those alumni in those areas and having that representation in schools, it's not there. So Yeah, and I just wanted to like, add when you said that, um, it's also good to recognize the implicit bias that we have as black people mm-hmm. against our own schools and institutions. Because sure. mm-hmm. I think like even in Kansas City, Missouri, like it's more integrated, it's more populated than Kansas City, Kansas. And even with that, there's still not a lot of black students that go to HBCUs. So like they have black teachers and black educators. My mom is superintendent of schools in Kansas City, Missouri. And yet there's still black students who are not choosing to go to HBCU. So I'm wondering, you know, what is the language? What are the things that are being said in schools? And what are the directives where students do not want to go to HBCUs? Sure. I feel like one thing, one bad piece of advice would be also the Howard bubble or like the HBCU bubble, because I feel like it's great to be prideful about your school and embrace your roots. But transitioning into the real world, it's like, it's not only just black people and there are ways that we have, you know, maneuvered and had together time together, but then it's just like, there's so many more diverse cultures out there. And I think we should take appreciation to that as well. So I think it's also about finding that balance of, Hey, HBCU love, as well as love for some of what the PWIs have to offer as well. What like tip would you have for people to try and like, have that balance between HBCUs and just other cultures mm-hmm. in general. Like if someone's either going into the workforce or someone's even interested in coming to an HBCU, like mm-hmm. what what would make them a better person in terms of being able to network with like a wider audience, I guess? I would say being open and not seeing black and white. I feel like we do a lot of that sometimes, like black power, mm-hmm. like, you know, and that's important to embrace what we have, but it's also important to see the bigger picture of, oh, it's not only us, you know, going through, you know, oppression and right. other things like that. So I feel like just having an open mind, an open heart, just going into the work world, be the best bet. What tips would you guys have for like, I don't either freshmen or just people looking at either coming to HBC or even just considering it? I would have to say um, your friends are a reflection of you and what Mm. you do. Mm -hmm. And of course, like you have discernment of who to be friends with, but sometimes people can even hide, like you guys will come in together and like have go to class and then next thing you know, she's just partying all the time. Like people change as well. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's very important. Like you have friends who will keep you on that path too. Like Mm -hmm. girl, come to class. I know you hung over, but come to class. Right. Like that's one of my, Advice. No, that that saying like you're the <coughs> what is it you're a representation you of the five closest people like that's real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree with that. I had to sure. learn that the hard way. So mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> you gonna see that a lot in college though. People are definitely gonna learn the hard way. For yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's the best place to do it, right? In yeah. College, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I was gonna say, and that's a great segue because I was gonna say acknowledge your mistakes because mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes like for me personally, like I used to down myself bad like about like mistakes I used to make, and it's like why am I making these mistakes? And I'm like. This is a, this it's okay to make mistakes because yeah. as long as I'm learning from them I, as a preventative, I won't make any more mistakes. And even if you do, it's okay to like move on and keep going because I feel like college is like so fast. That's mm-hmm. so, that, someone gave me advice and said college is going by fast, and that was good advice and because it's true. <laughs> like it's college goes by so fast, so it's like sometimes things don't happen. And I'm a functionalist, so a lot of things have in order to, for me to function, things have to function. Mm-hmm. So like. And obviously that's just like a breeding ground for mistakes because I'm always wanting everything to be in a line of perfection mm-hmm. or um, substance. So it like, it just make creates mishaps for me. But like, I've been acknowledging my mistakes and being like, it's okay, like we move on, like let's learn yeah. from this. And then allow, so people come in knowing that cause I've learned that in the ladder of my matriculation. Mm-hmm. So people come in and come in with that same perspective, like they'll be, they'll be okay, they'll be fine. Cause having that pressure to like, be a perfectionist or having that pressure to succeed it's like it it weighs down 
a lot. Yeah, yeah. perfection does not exist. You cannot be perfect. It's, it's just, not attainable. Yeah. Yeah, and piggybacking yeah. off of Akeem, like, give yourself grace. Like, yes. we're at top HBCUs yeah. doing half of what people in the workforce has been doing. It so again. it's just like, <laughs> just another, take it. Like, we're, another we're, at, we're at 20. <laughs> like, we have time to do whatever we yeah. want. Yeah, uh, and I think picking, sorry, were you about to say? No, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I would say picking back, piggybacking off of Alexis, um, taking one day at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, we come here with all of these ambitions and these goals, but, you know, take every day slowly. Um, I think everything happens for a reason as mm -hmm. well. And then, like, I think spring semester, too, is, like, a time where you can, like, start doing those goals. So, like, fall semester, especially as a first-year student, lock in, get that work done, do what you need to do, meet the movers and shakers. Mm -hmm. Spring semester, go, like, it's it's time, you know. <laughs> In terms of advice, I would say like don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Um, because I feel like I waited till like the second half, like when I was an upperclassman to start like joining organizations and doing things that I think I would align myself with. So like don't be afraid or worry about too much of what other people might think. Because mm -hmm. um, I think I struggled a lot with that like coming in freshman year. All right, we talked about a lot of great ideas, great topics, but this is all the time we have for this particular episode. We're going to have two more that you guys should definitely tune into. Thank you, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. And tune into these next two episodes because it's about to just get better and better. Mm -hmm.